So this is where I shoot and film my videos and this way it looks very very clean but if you look the other way you can see that there's lots of things around that are plugged in the way we record the way I'm testing all the things that are plugged in and connected are actually connected to the Threadripper PC that's underneath this desk. That's a $6,000 workstation that allows me to do everything that I need. I'm going to be replacing all of that with the M4 Max MacBook Pro. How is this possible? Because this guy only has a couple of ports, no USB type A ports, for example. So how am I able to actually connect everything into it? Well, I've got one ultimate dock that will help us do this. This is the iVanke Fusion Dock Max 1. And this is probably the best dock that you can get for your MacBooks when running Apple Silicon. And I'm very glad that they wanted to sponsor this video so I could actually talk further about this dock and actually put it into good use. Now, this dock has a ton of parts. Firstly, it's very minimalistic and it's got a very interesting design. You can see that there's like this elevated design and you can see air can go through from the sides and from the bottom. And that is it for a reason to actually make this heat dissipation very very good you might have had some docks before where they get really really hot whereas this one is doing the best job to keep this very very cool now you can have this dock on a table this way or that way and in the box there is actually these little rubber standoffs that come with it so let's install these right now now whether you want to have it vertically or horizontally you don't have to have both of these installed, but I don't know yet. So I'm going to install both of them on this side. So the feet will be installed on kind of this bottom L plate rather than on this side. One of the biggest downsides of most of the Thunderbolt docks out there is that it usually has one Thunderbolt 4 chip, which means that you're limited to what ports you have, whereas this one actually has two. And you'll see in a moment how this works. So firstly, starting from the right, we've got our Kensington lock here and then the power input. The power brick that comes with it is quite big and it is 180 watts power brick, as you can see here. And that is because this does not just power the dock, but also supports charging pass through via these parts and also from the front. These two ports support 96 watt power and in the front there's another port that supports 30 watts USB type C which is probably for your smartphones or something like that. Then these two ports here that are labeled with this white line that goes across this is the two ports that you want to connect to your laptop and they have a very very special cable for this. So as you can see they've got a cable that has dual Thunderbolt 4 on one side, which plugs into your laptop. And then these two that actually plug into there just like that. And just a side note, this M4 Max MacBook Pro has three Thunderbolt 5 ports, and this is Thunderbolt 4. Obviously Thunderbolt 5 is backwards compatible, but I can't wait to see what Ivanki is gonna do with a Thunderbolt 5 dock, because that could be insane. I'm really hoping that they're going to have 10 gigabit LAN. Then we have some USB Type-C ports. So this shows 6K displays. So if you have any of the Apple XDR or Studio displays, you can put them on these. But these are also 40 gigabits per second ports, which basically means Thunderbolt ports. So if you have any other Thunderbolt devices, you can use these as well. But for display support, which is ridiculous. I don't think there is any other dock out there that supports four displays for the Mac, which is amazing. Bear in mind, you do have to have the Max version of the chip because Pro version of the MacBooks only support two displays. Then we've got two HDMI ports. Then there's three USB type A ports that are 10 gigabits in speed and a 2.5 gigabit LAN. This is optical output for some of the sound devices if you have a high-end sound device and then line out for audio. Let's turn it around the other way and you can see two more Thunderbolt 4 ports in the front here and another two USB type A 10 gigabits per second ports, two more USB type C ports that are 10 gigabits in second. Bear in mind this port over here supports 30 watts power delivery so if you've got a smartphone like an iPhone or any others, you know, Android phones, you can actually get quick charge through that port in there. 
We've got SD card slot, micro SD card slot, and the mic and headphone combo jack. So if you do have a microphone that you want to plug in, it doesn't work on the back, but it does work in the front here. Now, I guess we're going to have to start plugging things in. The nice thing is after installing these rubber feet, it doesn't move as much. I have to push it very, very hard so that friction is very good. Okay, I finally have everything set up here now. So basically over here, what you can see, I've got the MacBook Pro plugged in and there's only two cables on the side that are connected to it and they go to this dock in there. Now, what is connected into this dock? So if you look on the back, there is quite a lot of different ports used. As you can see over here. So into there is connected this 4K display over there. Then we've got one 1080p display on this side. That's portrait in there. Then we've got Atom Mini connected into there as well. And then we've got another card reader, even though this one has SD card reader in there. I often, you know, film with multiple cameras. So we've got one in there and then one in there, which means that I've got another Kingston dock in here. And then this guy here is also connected into the back over there. So this is the Threadripper PC. And because this one has the 2.5 gigabit LAN in the back, if you're looking at our Mac OS here, if we go to Finder, as you can see, my two NASes are connected there. And if we go to uh, the network settings in here as you can see it's connected 2.5 gigabit lan and to show you it works i'm actually going to be pulling some files from the server right now by pulling it into there okay it says i've got to install the raw plugin now as you can see on that side i've got everything there installed just have to pull that b row in now as well so this that that now as you can see i've got one of these projects set up it works really really well right now this is going to be edited and i'm recording this on obs and it's actually got the ATA mini plugged in as well that's on the side so if you go to the ATA mini that actually has so now i can swap these different sources on this side let's start the test on this so these tests are mac mini and voila, look at that. And that Atom Mini Pro just works. Plug in, everything works. Now, if I'm gonna take one of these SD cards and I'll plug it into there, as you can see, untitled, here it is. Now, when setting this up, everything just worked. And I think when it comes to Mac docs, that's exactly what you want. You just want plug and play because you've gone for the Apple and Mac ecosystem because you just wanted everything to work from the get-go and everything about this dock literally just works and feel free to check online some of the other reviews when i was you know researching this everybody's had the same experience there is one kind of a downside that i wish it had that would complete my setup which would be 10 gigabit ethernet now if the nas would be located closer by i could connect it via thunderbolt but because it's in another room, Thunderbolt cables can't reach that far and, you know, the signal is actually going to be lost. So I'm going to have to connect to the NAS via 10 gigabit Ethernet. Right now, I only have 2.5 gigabit. But if we are transferring 500 gigabytes of files, then that's going to take now four times longer if I had a 10 gigabit Ethernet, which my Threadripper system had. If anyone knows a work around that, I'd love to know. But so far, I can see online that's going to cost extra $200, roughly something like that, which is quite expensive. But I, Vanky, maybe if you're making the Thunderbolt 5 version of this dock, Maybe we can get a 10 gigabit ethernet in there as well. If you want to check out this doc, check it out in the video description below. I'll leave the link in there. And during the Black Friday season, they are running some deals and offers on. So take advantage of their offers and deals. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>